This section is over continuous functions, so let's jump right into the definition of it. Now, this definition is an informal definition of continuous functions, and I will show you the formal definition once we start to understand a little bit of what it means. So the informal definition of a continuous function is a function that the graph can be drawn without ever having to pick up your pen or pencil from the paper. Now, as I started the rest of the sections with visuals, let me do the exact same thing from here. And actually, I'm going to give you the visual that we've been working through in our limits videos. So we see this function here, and in part A, we want to know where our function is continuous, and in part B, we want to know where our function is discontinuous, meaning where isn't it continuous at. It's actually going to be easier to do part B first, and then we'll just fill in the rest with part A. So remember, the function is discontinuous wherever you have to pick up your pen from the paper if you are drawing this graph. So let me go ahead and start from left to right here. If I start by just tracing the graph, everywhere my pin stays on the paper, that means my function is continuous. And anytime I have to pick up my pin, it is discontinuous. So we can see at this place here where there's a hole in the graph, and I have, if I have to fill in my point up there, my function is discontinuous at x equals negative 4. Okay. If I keep tracing my graph, again, that's where my function is continuous, and every time I have to pick up my pencil, like at the next spot at negative 2, that is where it is discontinuous. All right, moving on from negative 2 on, I can trace it here, I'm tracing it all the way to x equals 6. That's the next time I have to pick it up. So that is the next place where it is discontinuous at. Moving on past 6, tracing it all the way through. And I do actually have to pick up my pencil from the left-hand side of this vertical asymptote to the right-hand side of this vertical asymptote. So wherever your vertical asymptote is, is where it's discontinuous. So that is actually at 10 as well. And then I can trace it throughout the rest of the graph. So on this graph, every time I picked up my writing utensil at negative 4, negative 2, 6, and 10, that's where my function is discontinuous. Now that means every other place is where my function is continuous at. And so I'm going to do this in intervals. So less than negative 4 was continuous. Between negative 4 and negative 2, it was continuous. Um, between negative 2 and 6, between 6 and 10, and anything past 10. So if I wanted to write it in those intervals, I could do it like that. Or I could also write it in interval notation. So from negative infinity up to negative 4, from negative 4 to negative 2, from negative 2 to 6, 6 to 10, and 10 and beyond. So basically, it's just two different versions of writing the same exact answer of where my function is continuous. Now, I wouldn't be so worried about the format here. We just want to worry about the idea of it. When is a function discontinuous? Whenever you have to pick up your writing utensil. And when is your function continuous? when you can keep drawing or when you can keep tracing that graph without any breaks involved. Now, we already talked about the informal definition of a continuous function. Anytime we have to pick up our pen or pencil from the paper, that means our function at that place is discontinuous. Now, we don't really know why, and so let's talk about that in a little bit more detail. Anytime we ever have to pick up that writing utensil from the paper, it's most likely because we have a hole in the graph at that place or we have a gap in the graph at that place. So let's see a little bit more visuals of examples of holes and gaps in our graph. So I'm starting with examples of holes in the graph. And in each of these three graphs here, I have a place where my graph is discontinuous. And that happens at C on all three of my graphs. We can see that I have a hole in my graph. 
So in my first example, it's pretty obvious that I have a hole in my graph at that point. And so that, of course, emphasizes that our graph is discontinuous at that place. In my second example, of course, I still see the hole, but actually my graph is defined at a whole nother point. Now that does not affect whether the graph is continuous or discontinuous. If I'm still tracing this graph from left to right, and if I still have to pick up my writing utensil to either plot that point up there or to move on to the second part of my graph, that is, of course, where my graph is discontinuous at. In the third example, we, of course, can see that our graph is discontinuous, but it might not be obvious that that is labeled as a whole in that place because the farther out we get, the closer and closer these get here. They get infinitely close to our vertical asymptote. So at some point, it eventually just becomes a very small jump from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, and so that's why we call it a hole rather than a gap there. Now let's see the next examples of discontinuous functions, and these are because of gaps in the graph. And that means if we ever have to jump from one section of the graph to another section. So again, I have three examples, and again, all three of these examples are discontinuous at C because that's why I have to jump from one section of the graph to the other section. Now, in the first example, you can see there's just two clearly different defined pieces of our graph. In the second example, I have a just a typical piece on the left, but we can see a vertical asymptote piece on the right. And in my third example at C, this is what's typical of our rational functions or our fraction functions. Whenever we have a vertical asymptote, our graph typically jumps from going up on one side to down on the other side. And so these are all examples of discontinuous functions because of gaps. Now we've seen where functions can be discontinuous because of holes and because of gaps, but well, let's go ahead and see where functions can actually be continuous at. And again, we're focusing on C, but these three examples give us graphs that are continuous in every place. Now, in our first example, this is just a typical function that we see most of the time. So in any college algebra or in any calculus class, if we're talking about functions, most of the time you're going to see very nice functions like this here. In our limit videos and in this video, that's not going to be the case. We're not going to see these most often because we want to show you every example that can pop up otherwise. But just note that those are really the minority, even though it may not seem like in this chapter of the book. In my second example, my graph is also continuous. The way we can come up with a graph like this is because of a piecewise function. And so that's why I have these drawn in two different colors. The red represents one of my pieces, and the orange represents my other of the pieces. But if your two piecewise functions connect at the same point in the middle, then we consider that graph to be continuous. And so that is why my second example is continuous here. My third example also comes about because of a piecewise function. And again, that's why I have two separate colors there. My first piece is just going to give me a hole in the graph at C. And so that's where my red comes into play. My second piece of my piecewise function is just going to define a individual point. And what that point is going to do is that's going to fill in my hole at C. So I can therefore draw my graph all the way through without ever having to pick up my pen from the paper. And that goes back to my second example here. Just because those are defined at two different pieces, since they connect in the middle, I can draw this whole graph without ever having to pick up my writing utensil. All right. So I'm going to stop this video here, just leaving you with the thought of what is continuous functions and what causes functions to be discontinuous, basically any point we have to pick up our writing utensil, most likely because of a hole in the graph or because of the gap in the graph.